Hi guys, welcome to lab one in Azure. Prerequisite of this lab is you should have at least a trial account in Azure with some credit in it. And uh, I would recommend you to have some Hyper-V in your local machine uh, and a virtual machine having Windows 10 operating system installed in it. So let's jump on to lab one. What you see on the screen is the architect of today's lab. On the top, you see this Azure cloud. We want to create a resource group inside the Azure cloud. In that, we're gonna be putting our resource in it, resources that we're gonna be using, yeah? So uh, the first thing I'm gonna be doing inside, I'm gonna create a virtual network. A virtual network is nothing but it's just a network which is separated or like confined within itself. So we can put things inside it. So once we created the virtual network inside it, the first thing I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be creating for one subnet for development and another sub subnet for production environment. Inside this subnet of production environment, I want to put my virtual machine inside. And the aim of today's lab is connect connecting my home a laptop or desktop computer to this uh, VM connecting in the sense we can share file, we, we can share files and, you know, uh, check the connectivity over private IP address. So that means we have to create some VPN and we have to create some gateway server and we have to create additional subnet for gateway. Okay, so it's not complex as it looks like, it's very easy. So let's start. So I'm gonna open my Azure portal and this is my Azure portal. Uh, I can click on more services, but you know, these are enough for, for this lab. You can also always click on here on the top left and then you can see all the, you know, the basic services are there, but you can always add more services under your favorites if you need. So as per the picture, we're going to start uh, start creating things from the left to right. So from the left, the first thing we're going to be doing, creating a resource group. And inside the resource group, we're going to create a VNet or virtual network. So let's create a resource group. So on the screen, again, if you click on there, click on resource group. And I can then click on create resource group. In here, I need to make sure my subscription is selected. If you have a multiple subscription, make sure you are selecting the one which you want to do this lab. Right, so let's call let's call this resource group, yeah, lab 1A is fine for me. Then we need to create this resource group in one of the region. Region is nothing but the geolocation or geographical location of a data centers. So let's say I want to use a data center in West US too. The reason is that things are cheap there. I will have some latency, so don't worry, I will be pausing the video and resuming it, okay? If you don't want latency, then you can always keep your things in somewhere in Europe or even UK South, yeah? But you have to pay for it. So let's click on review and create. And as, as long as it says validation passed, we can click on create. And that will create our resource group. Now, inside the resource group, we want to create our VNet. Yeah, so left hand side, if you see VNet1, so let's create a virtual network. So all you have to do in the, if you want to create anything really, this search bar on the top is very handy. Just click on that and type virtual and it should come up, yeah, virtual networks. And now you can click on create virtual network. And let's make sure the subscription is selected. Let's select our newly created resource group, which is Lab1A. We did it in previous step and let's call it uh, VNet1. Yeah, I'm happy with the region. It is same where our resource group was created. Let's click on review and create. Now, what I see here that by default, Azure will all will give me like this uh, IP address ranges. I can change it. So if I want to change it, I can click on IP addresses here and then I can delete it and let's change it. So let's call it, yeah, 192.168.10.0 slash 24. That's fine. Uh, it comes up because I used it earlier. So that's, that's looking great. Uh, that is the my ranges, but further now, what we have to do, we need to start adding, adding our subnet, production and development. So if I click on add subnet, and if I click on here and call it production, and for production, I want to define address ranges, or range is 168. Now this range will give me 123 IP address to use within this uh, subnet. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. Just click on add. And uh, we will create another subnet in a minute, the development one, yeah? So just click on review and create. So, and then we can click on create, yeah. So this will create our VNet and inside our VNet, this will also create a subnet. So once that is created, we will create an, a, a second subnet of development. 
and then we will start creating uh, things for our VPN. The deployment has been completed. All I can do is click on go to resource and, and in here I want to make sure that this VNet1, this is the name of my newly created virtual network, is selected and on the left hand side there is something called subnets. So if you click on that you will see your production subnet here. Great, let's add our second subnet that is that will be for development and there we can simply choose let's make it slash uh, 26 yeah so that will give me 59 ip address to use in here so 192.168.10.12a okay that all looks good to me let's click on save now it's going to be quick anyway uh, because we're just adding a new subnet uh, now we can click on refresh and we should be able to see subnet here great uh, the next thing is that before we start creating things for our vpn right we need to have a gateway gate, virtual gateway yeah and for virtual gateway we need to have a gateway subnet so for that we will click on here and now we can define ip ranges for our gateway subnet so i would say leave it as it is because this will give you know ip address for 11 users to connect over vpn yeah, so yeah, that's fine. Don't don't change any setting. Just leave it. Make sure you know the name. The name is Gateway Subnet here. Let's save it. And the next thing will be to create our gateway. So all I can type here is Gateway, and it should come up. So we are after something called Virtual Network Gateways. Let's click on there, and let's click on Create Virtual Network Gateway. Right. So in here. There's a message here. It says select a virtual network to get resource group. Okay, so that means we need to select a virtual network here. Now our virtual network, the name of our virtual network is VNet1. So let's select VNet1, but if we click on here, we don't see VNet1. The reason, reason is that the region is not selected. So let's click on there and let's bring up our region, which was West US2. And let's click on here. And now you can see your virtual network. Let's click on that. Now, what? What is this SKU that you know you can you can click on here and you can compare the way different uh, SKUs given in here? Of course, they come with a different price and you know different protocol and protection. For this lab, I'm only going to use a basic SKU. Okay, don't do any other changes here because we need VPN and we know we want root based VPN. So I'm simply going to define a name for this and I'm going to call it uh, VNet Gateway. So VNet gateway that looks good to me now scroll further down and now yes we need to create a public ip address name i'm going to call this vnet gateway 2 in fact if you like you can add public in the end so yeah that makes things easy and understandable once that's done let's just click on review and create and validation is passed check all the settings if you're happy with it i'm happy with these settings let's click on create now once i click on create <laughs> this is going to take at least half an hour to 40 minutes okay so if you are doing lab you have a time for a coffee so let me pause it here while the deployment is still in progress we can carry on to our next task because we don't uh, we are not dependent on this deployment for the next task okay so for the next task is going to be on your own premises virtual machine you can do this on your own local computer as well but i would not recommend you to do it okay uh, before that I must show you that there is a website and this website I'm going to put the link in the description of the video because you're going to need this website uh, when we when we do things on on our local computer so in my virtual machine Windows 10 all I have to do is there are some script provided by Microsoft we need to generate two certificates one will be self-signed certificate and that we're going to be need for Azure and Another certificate is going to be for, going to be for clients. So any client who would want to have a VPN in their com uh, computer or laptop, you know, to connect to our virtual machine in cloud, we need to generate certificate for uh, on-prem clients as well. Okay, so this is the script there. But first, first thing first, let me show you this script, or rather this command. Uh, if we if we run this command, let we can find out how many certificates are there on our on-premises computer. Okay, so if I open my Hyper-V here and uh, let me bring up the powershell in fact i'm going to go for powershell ise okay so first thing first if we if we run that command 
that is to show you how many certificates you have in your computer if you have anything previously then so nothing in there so at least we know that there's no certificate if you had any cert certificate don't panic just make sure that you can see the difference with the new newly generated certificate but we will have names for the new certificates anyway so you don't have to worry about much here okay so let's go back in that page and we're gonna start bringing some script like copy and paste really nothing else so again if from the top of the page if you scroll down first thing first I'm simply gonna copy this and I'm gonna create a self signed certificate so if I go back in my virtual machine I'm gonna paste the script and I'm gonna call this this is the name of the certificate CN equals to okay I'm gonna call it for Azure and I'm gonna leave everything as it is yep so let's run this run the script and the script's been run so I've, I, I've got a new certificate there called for Azure and also let's scroll down and create another certificate for client so if let's keep scrolling down just copy this one and come back here in your VM and get rid of this and paste that and this time we can change the name like clients or win 10 client yeah so that looks good to me and all you have to do run the script again yeah so now we have created two certificates in order to see those two certificates if I go back up here and remember this is the first time I ran this command what I'm gonna do I'm gonna run the command again so that that should show you both the certificates here you are both the certificates are there okay so what we need to do now is at this point this virtual machine yes we have created a certificate we have generated a certificate for a win 10 client but it gets automatically installed on this virtual machine okay so what we really need to do here just to go and grab this certificate and take it to Azure so for that I'm simply gonna open MMC so let's open management console Microsoft management console and in here if you if we click on file add snap in and we want to add certificates click on add and we, we make sure my user account is selected here okay and then just click on okay easy and then you expand your certificates and we're gonna be going in personal certificates and we should be able to see our newly generated certificates there so let's have a look here you are yep so this windows client client certificate we need it for this virtual machine which is in on-prem or any other vm or computer you have on or you have you on your own premises yep so this is already we have it we have installed that it's already installed because it's generated here but for azure what we need to do we need to export it and we need to take it to our azure so let's right click on it click on all task and click on export click on next and click on next just make sure this is selected no and click on next and let's choose here base 64 and next again and where do you want to keep your certificate so I would say I can simply put it on my desktop is fine yep and then I'm just gonna call it for Azure okay things looking good and very exciting here you are your certificate is there on the desktop here so if I minimize my virtual machine and go back to Azure the deployment is still in progress it will take as I said you know 40 minutes up up to 40 minutes so now we can't do much here what we can do that we can only wait when the deployment is finished and we need to take our certificate up there so for that I will right click on the certificate and I will open the certificate with notepad And all I need to do just to take this thumbprint of the certificate and just paste it in Azure yeah I would be copying only the bits inside begin certificate and before end certificate okay so let's wait and let's pause the video and let's wait until the deployments finish and then we can quickly do that okay our virtual network gateway has been deployed so we can now click on go to resource and in here we can click on point to site configuration and remember we have just created the certificate and we copied we have copied the value those values they're going to be coming in here so once you click on that you click on configure now and in here we need to define address range uh, sorry address range for our uh, our VPN client so let's uh, let's 
to find something let's say 192.168.10 uh, no, uh, 20. Dot, I, I think it's zero yeah let's do this 20.0 slash 28 yeah so 192 168 20 0 slash 28 which is fine and i'm gonna ask I'm, again i'm gonna put a name for a certificate so i'm just gonna say azure vpn and then here this is where you're gonna paste your value yeah the one you copied it from down there so thumbprint that you copied simply click on there and press ctrl v and after you paste it just click on save and once you click on save you can download the vpn after this this has processed don't download in the middle don't download like now you're gonna have an error saying uri error okay so keep an eye on that once that is finished then we can download it so again i'm gonna pause the video now so that has been done i suppose let's click on that notification icon and it says saved virtual network gateway great once that is saved then i can click on that and this will download our vpn client so that will be a zip file which we have to unzip it So that has downloaded that zip file on the bottom left so what i'm gonna do i'm simply gonna i'm gonna take that this zip file in my virtual machine and i'll show you this file on the desktop of that virtual machine okay so i have moved that file in my virtual machine rather what i've done i've just uh, added my local c drive in here inside the virtual machine and now i can simply unzip it so i can extract it all and i can simply extract it here and once that is done mm -hmm. so that's great now once that is done we need to find out uh, windows amd64 and inside that there is your vpn client which you're going to be installing it before that let me show you if i click on here so i've got one network uh, which is saying network three and also if i open command prompt and if i show you my ip address from there so IP config and you can see I've got one Ethernet adapter yeah and my DNS suffix is home and this is my IP address now I'm gonna keep this open rather yeah so in the background all I'm gonna do is uh, is here I'm simply gonna run this VPN client that will install it okay right so that's done let's click on here and if i click on here i see something called vnet1 yeah so our virtual network has been picked up yeah so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna click on that and i'm simply gonna connect to this vpn okay so connect and then connect again and click on continue So it's now saying connected here in the middle okay so let's go back here in our command prompt and i'm gonna run the same command again and it should tell you yeah so it it has now getting another ip address from that vpn yeah so from that vnet yeah so at so now we know that it is now you know through vpn is in the private network of our uh, vnet there okay so let's minimize that now our next task as per this is just to create this yeah, just to create this uh, vm virtual machine and we're going to put windows 10 operating system in it and then we're going to verify the connectivity over the vpn however it is connecting the connectivity is there so let's go and create our virtual machine for that i will simply search i will simply click on that and search for virtual machine and if i can click on that there is no vm so i can simply click on add and add vm to add virtual machine I would choose the same resource group as lab 1a and i'm gonna have to find a name for that vm so all i'm gonna say uh, win 10 win 10 vm i'm gonna make sure the region is selected same as our resource group and then i'm not gonna use any redundancy for either availability zone or availability set i'm gonna make sure windows 10 pro is selected there and yeah this all looks good we need to provide a username and a password so let's provide a username let's call it um, vm secret and password 
do not forget this password okay uh we're gonna be using rdp so it's good that this port is selected yep and we're gonna go to networking here no rather let's go to disk first so let's go to disk and we're gonna be choosing um standard ssd yeah you don't want to pay money for premium ssd because you know you if you want pay as you go account so let's keep it that let's click on networking and in here we need to make sure that our production subnet is selected so let's create this in inside our production subnet it will have an ip address of this range and uh, pretty much everything's looking good yeah let me just cl click on management and I don't want to have root diagnostic for this. I'm just gonna disable it here. This is just for lab purpose. I simply wanna want to run that VM to be run. Uh, auto shutdown, let's not enable it. Otherwise it's just gonna shut down at seven o'clock every evening. In advance, I don't need any extra extension to install. So what is this guys? If you want, if I click on here, and if this is like, if I want uh, any of these to be installed while VM is getting created, you know, alongside the operating system, I can, Add this extension we will look into this later but not in the first lab okay so everything is looking good all we have to do now review and create and let's see what the validation says we are, it's it's it has failed the validation that means we missed out something in basics so let's click on that and uh, yes this has been missed out so let's click let's tick it make sure you read it it's about the licensing let's click on review and create again and validation passed and let's create it so our virtual our first ever virtual machine is getting created okay so our deployment is complete and before we start our virtual machine i would recommend you to go to your on premises virtual machine here and uh, create a folder here uh, somewhere and this this folder let's say we create a folder in desktop and let's call it uh, shared files and the aim will be that we're gonna be sharing this folder over VPN. So it will be shared towards our cloud virtual machine. Okay, so in the inside the shared file, I'm simply gonna put a text file and I'm gonna share the folder. Okay, so now guys, you know how to share the folder. Just create a folder, share it with, share it with everyone. Make sure you set your firewall and uh, we will start from there. So I'm gonna pause the video. So what I have done, I have created a folder and I have shared it. I have made sure my firewall for file sharing is off in that private network area. Okay, so once you've done it, let's start our virtual machine. Uh, let, we can go to resource here. And in here, we should have a public IP address. So let's copy it. Just remember there's a public IP address and there's a private IP address as well. Okay, so I copied the public IP address and all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open my remote desktop and I'm gonna simply open that public IP address, or rather connect to that public IP address. The username would be same as we defined while creating our virtual machine. <clears throat> so when you connect to your virtual machine first ever time, it's, you're gonna have the same experience really. You know, when you open your windows first ever time, you have to define, you know, what settings you want to send to Microsoft, like, you know, you want to enable uh, the diagnostic level and all that. So they're all gonna come up here. So for that reason, I'm gonna pause the video. And once that's gonna done, then I will resume the video. Okay, guys, so this is our virtual machine in the cloud, which has started. Now, the IP address of this, the public IP address of this machine is what you can see on the screen on the top. But what we want to see that can we ping our virtual machine, which is locally, which is locally set up in our Hyper-V. Yep. So the local virtual, virtual machine, let me show you. This is the one we are talking about, which I've created the folder. Let's see the IP address of this machine. So let's open our command prompt and let's find out the IP address. So the IP address we've been looking for, you know, underneath this virtual network of VNet and that's 192.168.20.4. This is what we want to see if we can ping it from here. So if I minimize this and open virtual machine of cloud, so ping 192.168.20.4, that was the address. So yes, we can ping our VM on premises on our private IP address. That is great. Now what we want to see, can we see the shared folder? right so for that let's open our folder and now 
when you open our folder, if you click on network, and this is literally, I mean, this is this is this VM. Yeah. But in order to see any shared folder for our local uh, VM, on-premises VM, all you have to do is just type the IP address here. So double slash 192.168.20.4 and then slash. So again, this is asking for the credentials for our local VM, which is installed locally in your Hyper-V. So normally, uh, you know, you can log in as administrator or whatever credential you are using to log into your local virtual machine. So let's say mine is samlt2.local. Okay. So here you are, you can see the shared file. So let me click on that one and it tells you the, the same file. So if I minimize this public IP address one, and if I go back on my local VM and let's close this. And here, this folder is shared with those things. Yeah. So we can see the files from my local uh, VM to the VM in cloud. The next thing we're going to be do, this is just another test I want to do. Is that let's say if I if I simply close this just simply close it yeah and we are back in Azure and now this is your private IP address and I want to connect to that machine by using private IP address yeah so I simply copy it go back in my virtual machine this is my virtual machine local and what I want to do I simply type remote desktop connection and as long as, as long as I have got my VNet connected here, I can connect by my private IP address. So not picking up, let me just say 192.168.10.132. So let's do that. 192.168.10.132. And there you are, it's asking some credential now. We know the credential that we have created while we were creating our virtual machine. That was VM secret and the password. Let's connect it. So now this has gone, you know, back to where we disconnected. But this time we connected by private IP address. So I will leave this lab here, guys. Now it's up to you what else you want to test practice in here. Yeah. So this was just a basic lab. Uh, once you nail this lab down, the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to I'm going to create a virtual machine. In fact, I'm going to use this virtual machine in the lab too. And I'm going to load some software, some apps in it. Then I'm going to do sysprep. I'm going to capture the image of that VM and I'm going to store uh, that image somewhere in Azure. And I will use that image to deploy VMs, further VMs. So when we deploy it, it will be deployed, you know, with that preloaded software or apps. So good luck for this, guys. And let me know. Just remember the links, all the links which I was talking about, the PowerShell script and anything else going to be in the description of the video.